members of the American Memorial Society. Welcome to the 2020 National Convention, well, Unconvention Awards and Honors presentation, sponsored by Purell. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, thank you for joining us tonight. We are going to have our entire award and honors presentation as we usually do at the National Convention, which of course has been canceled this year. And we're very excited about this. We have every award that's normally given out at the convention is going to be presented tonight. And at this time, I'd like to ask our award and honors chair, Rhonda Verhoeven, to come up and distribute the award. Thank you, Rhonda. Hello, and welcome to our award ceremony. Uh, we have a small but mighty crowd in the audience, so if you hear that ruckus clapping, you'll know what that's from. First of all, before we begin, I want to thank the Ogichi Daylily Club. They put in for so much effort in putting together a national convention, and as the last co-chair from our last national, I can tell you it is a lot of work, and one of the best parts of putting together a national is when it's done and you look back and you think of the great memories that you've made and know that you gave everyone a wonderful experience. And unfortunately for them, they did all the work and they don't get that really great reward in return. So thank you to the Ogichi Club for all of their work. Everyone at ADF hopes that you are safe and that you are keeping yourself well and that um, coronavirus does not affect you or your family and we are just doing our best to be safe. You will see some photos that we've been taking of our social distancing. Our president, Scott, just talked about being sponsored by Corel. We might as well have been. We've been doing disinfecting all the time. So why are we doing this? In a time of a pandemic, why is it that we're coming together and doing an awards presentation? Well, the answer is threefold. First of all, our hybridizers, in my opinion, maybe not everybody, but if, if you agree in the audience, be sure to give a clap after I say this. The hybridizers are the backbone and lifeblood of this organization. If it wasn't for them, <laughs> if it wasn't for the work of the hybridizers, we wouldn't have our flower moving forward. We wouldn't find interesting new things and bringing more and more new members in all the time. It is their tireless efforts that make it so that we're here. And many, many, many of these awards are going to be um, given to hybridizers for their incredible accomplishments. Second of all, there are so many people that aren't um, hybridizers, but they are volunteers. They are people who are working tirelessly, doing those thankless jobs, and we need to be able to recognize them as well. Um, and lastly, there are some people who are earning lifetime awards. And this is once in a lifetime, and it would not be right to not give them proper recognition. Sure, we could send them an award in the mail, but we really wanted to make sure that those that are receiving lifetime awards received the recognition that they deserve. We do have a canned clap response, which is just adding some wonderful comedic relief to the crazy times we're living right now. So just so you know, how awards will be distributed is there were four directors here at the um, board meeting. They all received their awards for their region. And I will be sending out packages probably early next week, give me a day or two to recover upon returning home. Um, and they will be going out to all the directors that weren't able to come. So all awards will be sent to directors. There are a couple of exceptions to that rule. The Ophelia Taylor Award will be coming directly from Director um, Dana Freshour. The David Hall Awards will be coming from Rebe uh, Rebecca Board, the Pop Poll Chair. The Sarah Sykes Award will be coming from Debbie Smith from Region 14. And the Beth Newsletter Plaque will be coming from Nancy Harvey um, of Region 7. So obviously, scholarships are going to be sent to the individuals. I'm not going to be sending them money. I'll explain it in a minute. So let's 
get on with our presentation. There are two nights worth. Usually our awards are split up into two nights. Tonight we are going to do it all in one night. So feel free to be sitting back and enjoying your favorite beverage. I wish I was right now. And we're gonna get started. First up are our regional newsletter awards. Nancy Harvey and her team are in charge of that. Here's the Region 7 director. These awards were secret. Nobody knew about these except for Nancy and her team and me. So <laughs> these are new to everybody who's in here tonight and to our audience. First up, the best article about gardens goes to Tim Harrington for Claude and Martha Carpenter's Hickory Lake Garden in the Region 5 newsletter, The Georgia Region. The best article about hybridizers or hybridizing. Joanne Stewart, hybridize, me, I wouldn't know where to begin. Also from the Region 5 newsletter, The Georgia Daily. The best article about daylily culture was to Linda Sue Barnes, using a drone to map your garden from the Region 15 newsletter, The Hemolina. The best scientific article, I made him sign his own certificate and he didn't even realize it. Uh, Scott Elliott, for a simple guide to understanding and treating rust in daylily, the Region 5 newsletter, the Georgia Daily. Congratulations. <laughs> the best article utilizing humor goes to A.W. or Aw, shucks. What mother never told you about daily garden tours? Could things get any worse? Region 5 newsletter, the Georgia Daily. The best article on photographing daily. John Stahl, Duet Redux, and I probably pronounced that wrong. It probably should be done in French, but I do not speak French. From the newsletter, or the Region 4 newsletter, Daily in the Great Northeast. The best historical article goes to Carol McDonald, History of the Daily Society of Greater Atlanta, Region 5 newsletter, the Georgia Daily. The best article on a daylily personality. I think there was some collusion here. Claude Carpenter, a family affair. The Harrington, Region 5 award winning family. Region 5 newsletter, the Georgia Daily. The best article on outreach. Goes to Peggy Kofi, how to attract new members and keep them coming back. The Region 6 newsletter, Daylilies of the Southwest. You can clap, that's good. We have people clapping. <laughs> the best article from a non-listed topic goes to Charlie Harper, Sunshine and Gold in the Garden, Region 2 newsletter, Great Lakes Daylily. Best use of pictures and graphics, this is an overall award, goes to Claude Carpenter, the editor of the Region 5 newsletter, the Georgia Daylily. And this award is going to be sent to the winner, the best regional newsletter award, goes to the Georgia Daylily, Region 5 newsletter with Claude Carpenter as editor. Congratulations to all of our newsletter award winners. <laughs> Next up, we're going to do uh, the David Hall Memorial Awards. Rebecca Board is our popularity poll chair. She shared these with me, and Rebecca, please forgive me. I changed the order around so that it was done by regions as all of my um, sections are done by regions. So you will see what I did. I hope you'll forgive me. The David Hall Award is given to hybridizers of cultivars receiving the most votes in each region's top poll. So for regions one and two, the winner 
is Jamie Gosser for Neon Flamingo. For Region 3, George Dworkian for Rose F. Kennedy. For all Region 4, there was a tie. First one, Jamie Gosser for Heavenly United We Stand. And Rich Howard for Explosion in the Paint Box. Region 5 was to Katie Sue Harrington for Dorothy and Toto. Region 6 goes to Patrick Stamilli for Freewheeling. Region 7 also goes to Patrick Stamilli for Dr. Gerald Corbett. Region 8, there was a tie. First up was Ra Hansen for Tuscawilla Tigress. And Jamie Gosser for White Eyes Pink Dragon. Region 9 goes to Patrick Stamilli for Ruby Spider. And Region 10 had a three-way tie. So it must have been really close there in Region 10. First up, Leo Sharp for Brookwood Black Kitten. Richard Webster for Webster's Pink Wonder. And Mort Morse for God Save the Queen. Region 11 goes to Jamie Gosser for Purple Cheetah. Region 12 goes to CJ and Virginia Gregory, Odd Man Out. Region 13 goes to Ken Banav for Little Black Bug. Region 14 goes to Tara George for Banana Smoothie. And lastly, Region 15 goes to Vic Santa Lucia, or yeah, Lucia, right, for Cherryville. Next up, we're going to move into our photography and video awards. Jim Cruz is our video and photographic awards chair. He's here tonight, but I'm going to do the presenting for him. <laughs> First up is the Mildred Schlump Landscape Award winner. By the way, these also are surprises. Nobody knows who the winners are except for um, Jim and his committee and me. So the first winner of the Landscape Award tonight goes to Claude Carpenter um, for Claude Carpenter Garden. So Claude can make some pie. Next up is the Mildred Schlump Single Bloom Award. This award goes to Scott Newkirk in Region 8 for a photo of Proof by Jim Murphy. The Artistic Garden Image Award winner goes to Alan Clark, who is an international member for Hoverfly Feeding on Marion Vaughn by Smith. The AHS Multi Bloom Award winner goes to Conrad Rosinski in Region 2 for Watch Show Managing Mary. And then we have our youth division. Our youth awards will receive a monetary award. Uh, in our beginner division, our winner is Wesley Coates from Region 11 for his photo of Clueless by David Kirchhoff. <laughs> 
our Youth Intermediate Division Award winner goes to Andrew Cameron, Region 4, Making Lemonade by the Song. The Sarah Sykes Award winner, and remember that award will be coming from Debbie Smith, goes to Ken Cobb, Region 15, for his entry titled Photography Series 2 Photo Competition or Composition for Competition. Next up are our Regional Service Awards. These are lifetime awards. So how one achieves this award is they um, have people send nominations, mostly unbeknownst to them, that um, nominate them for the good that they do throughout AHS and the region specifically. Uh, they would send them to the awards and honors chair. And then um, the board of directors vote at their fall board meeting. So these are completely um, private. Nobody knows the winners and nobody knows who's all been nominated. So this is kind of a big deal. For that reason, I've taken snippets and because it is a lifetime achievement award, I've taken snippets of nomination letters. I couldn't read the whole thing or we'd be here until next week um, for each of the regions. But just know that if you don't see someone in your region um, or you don't see a winner in your region, that simply means that there wasn't someone nominated in your region. And you can do something about that. So don't be afraid to send in a nomination showing support for the amazing amount of work that's happening in all of our regions. First up, region one, this person joined their club in 2010. She has always held a board position to lend her input and expertise when needed. She always donated plants to the club auction. Her garden has been on many local and garden club tours over the years. She encourages fellow members and coaches um, and coaches them in the garden design and does blogging about it to further her influence. She is also a member of the only snail mail Robin of the AHS. She loves to edit and publish articles, which led her to be the pioneer journal editor for four years. She is very interested and enthusiastic about the history of gaming and, the very, and is very deserving of this award. The region one service winner is, and we're all going to applaud very loudly, Susan Holland. Congratulations. <laughs> Next up, Region 3. This person has served as regional president for four years, has processed garden judges' applications yearly in a timely manner. He helped recruit new members to Region 3 by attending various club meetings and regional events to encourage visitors to become a part of Region 3. He was instrumental in the organizing and implementing the Region 3 summer meeting in Dover, Delaware in 2013. This was the first meeting of the nature in the state of Delaware since Region 3 was founded. He coordinated the bus schedules, meeting schedule, and garden tours, utilizing committees he organized to carry out all of the functions needed to have a successful weekend for all the participants. He talks to numerous garden clubs throughout the area and works hard to spread his love for our special flower. He is always looking for new ways to educate the public about daylily. He is an AHS garden judge. He has donated thousands of daylily plants over the years to help support the finances of Region 3. This year, Region 3 Service Award goes to Dave Lewicki. Dave, if I pronounced your last name wrong, I'm sorry. With a last name like Barovin, I understand. Last name is a tough call. Region four. This person has been a member of the AHS in their club since 1996. Since that time, she has been a stalwart and dedicated volunteer for the club and region. The following list is a summary of how she has served her club and the region over the last 23 years. 
She served as the club's vice president and had the responsibility for organizing the calendar of yearly events and obtaining speakers for the club program meetings, served as recording secretary, served as member at large, club president from 2013 to 15, chair of the club's membership committee since 2010, chair for the club's flower show in three separate years, assist with organizing the club's annual plant sales, organized the bus tour arrangement for the AHS National Convention in 20, uh, 2006, and in 2013, she was the chairperson for the Region 4 meeting. She has served as garden judge and exhibition judge since 2006, became an exhibition judge instructor in 2012, has organized several exhibition and garden judge clinics, has instructed several exhibition clinics as well as um, for Region 4 meetings serves as an exhibition judge for flower shows, volunteers at clubs display gardens, has attended nine AHS national conventions and several region four and region three meetings. This person is currently the president of region four. Congratulations to region four service winner, Luann Madden. Region five. We're in region five right now, so this is local. These people are an incredible region five couple who absolutely uphold the characterization of service and certainly support the activity of growing daylilies and the institution of our daylily society. ADS region five has three meetings a year and they have attended and participated in the activities for most of these meetings over the last 25 years since joining the society. They are members of two day lily clubs. Through the years, they have demonstrated their commitment to making a difference in a wide range of activities and service in various club positions, including a past president. They have served as perennial helpers with their annual day lily show. During their annual Christmas party, one of them puts on his preacher's hat and enlightens the club with a Bible reading for the season. He also is the incoming regional president. They have a fantastic garden, which they use not only for their own enjoyment, but to help grow and educate folks about daily. Their garden was also a 2019 Region 5 tour garden at the Spring Regional sponsored by the Middle Georgia Daily Society. They both serve as exhibition judges and exhibition judge instructors. Also, both are garden judges and one is a garden judge instructor and serves as the Region 5 garden judge liaison. This year's Region 5 Service Award winners are James and Louise Fennell. Region 6. This couple has dedicated their service to Region 6 for many years. One of them was elected to be the chair of the 2008 National Convention that was held in Houston, Texas. They also had their garden on tour for this event. One of them was elected to hold the position of Region 6 President and held this office for two terms and then served two terms as Region's Director and is currently serving as the Region's Publicity Director. The other was also elected to hold the position of Secretary for the Region, which she currently holds. They are both active senior exhibition judges. As a way to repay their services to the various clubs, they donate their fees back to the Regional. At the regional plant sales, they always take the positions of keeping up with the auctions on the computer and being a spotter at the auctions. They are both exemplary individuals who always advertise AHS to the region, clubs, and the national. This year's Region 6 Service Award winners are Maureen and Robert Valenza. Region 8. This person prefers to work quietly behind the scenes and doesn't seek the limelight. However, she is always a stalwart, stalwart supporter of both our local club and our region. She has held most offices on the local level. She has served two terms as our regional director at the national level. She is a consensus builder and doesn't shy away from solving problems herself should she prove a necessity. To list all of her accomplishments would take pages. A few notable items are, 
hosting our regional convention and banquet in style. Graciously donating her home on numerous occasions. She has also been a fabulous host of our annual Christmas party. Always donates plants generously to our plant sales. Supplies off cape specimens for both our early and late exhibitions. Volunteering actively both on a local, regional, and national level whenever and in whatever capacity necessary for the success of the project. Some of her projects include, but are not limited to, modernizing AHS's web presence, the 100 for 100 campaign, the Facebook auction, redesigning both of the AHS, AHS mission statement and bylaws to better reflect their changing society and assuring the continued growth and future of AHS. These examples are just a small smattering of the scope of their selfless efforts promoting fellowship and future success of our society. The Region 8 Service Award winner is Marsha Zeck. Region 10. This person is a leader in her club. She has served in many roles and has been the treasurer of the club for the past 10 years. As new members join, she is always welcoming and is a great champion to encourage membership in AHS. She catalogs all of the pictures for the daylily sales and is a keeper of all non-plant materials that the club needs. While her accomplishments with the club activities are noteworthy, they are amplified in her task for Region 10. She has served as treasurer in the region for six years. In this capacity, she has served as registrar for each of the midwinter symposiums. Throughout it all, she has worked to make sure that these events are successful and within budget. She has been the cashier for every plant auction for Region 10, which includes the Midwinter Symposium plant auctions, as well as the summer regional meetings. While these accomplishments are not glamorous or indie, they are critical tasks for the maintenance of a successful, well-run region. In addition to serving as treasurer, she has also been an exhibition judge for the past 10 years and has served as exhibition judge liaison for two years at the same time she was treasurer. Always working in the background, she has performed another important task that is almost always underappreciated. She has been a proofreader of the regional newsletter, which is truly a valuable asset. This year's Region 10 Service Award winner is Sandra Merritt. Region 11. This couple has worked tirelessly for the region on the local, state, and national level. One has served as the Region 12 Director for five years, and in that time has also served as the Chief Financial Officer for the AHS. Both were instrumental in bringing and putting on national conventions, the National Convention in Orlando in 2009. They have also chaired and worked on at least five spring and fall regional meetings hosted by the Central Florida Day Lily Society. The other has also been a frequent contributor to the Region 12 newsletter. They are past presidents and vice presidents of both the Central Florida Day Lily Society and the Sun Belt Day Lily Society. They have also been instrumental in hosting Day Lily Mecca in Central Florida. They have also chaired numerous committees for club shows and exhibitions. They are always the first to volunteer when the club needs to get something done. In short, there isn't much they haven't done in this region. And we as a region are indebted to them and eternally grateful. The Region 12 Service Award winners are Bob and Sarah Martin. Region 13. There are few, if any, who have contributed as much to Day Lilies in the Region 13 as this person. She maintains one of the largest collections of day lilies in a public setting in the country. She has amassed a collection of 1,000 to 1,200 named cultivars over the past 20 years. She spends an average 25 hours a week in the garden. This is in addition to maintaining her own personal garden, teaching master gardener classes and her many other volunteer activities. 
She serves on the executive board of her club and is the secretary for Region uh, 13. I dare say no one past, present, or future has or will work as hard or the number of hours as this person has in the promotion of Greeley. The Region 13 Service Award winner is Claire Fontenot. Region 14. This person joined ADS in 2019 and has served her club in our region faithfully. She has organized numerous bus trips for her club, reserving hotels and coordinating the club's visit with each of several gardens. She plans her club trips with minute attention to detail. In 2011, she became a garden judge and has encouraged many others to do so. She is also a master gardener and encourages interagency cooperation and communication. She regularly attends regional and national meetings and continues to work quietly behind the scenes to assist anyone who needs help. Having served many years as her club's president, in 2017 to 2018, she accepted the position as Region 14 president when no one else was willing. Reluctantly, her club allowed her a two-year respite so that she could devote her energies to the region. But this past year, it re-elected her once again as their club president. While serving as regional president, she visited each and every club to encourage communication and solve member issues, always giving her total attention to each issue presented to her with a positive attitude. During her term as regional president, she also visited each ADS display garden in Region 14 with recommendations for growth and safety. She has opened her country garden for many meetings and tours. She hosts many speakers and visitors for her club. She has also written many articles for local, regional, and national newsletters. This year's Region 14 Service Award goes to Therese Goodson. Region 15. If Webster had an entry for the most deserving recipient of the AHS National Service Award, we would certainly find a picture of this person. Her tireless efforts, her expert organizational skills, and her heartfelt passion for the promotion of Daylily are undeniable. She is undoubtedly a jewel in the AHS crown, just as she is for Region 15 in her club. Prior to moving to her current residence, she found one of her passions flower shows. Upon joining her current club, she quickly shared that passion by single-handedly organizing and running its first flower show with the intention and promise of more in the near future. But this person wears many hats. From her club leadership with helping with a helping hand for anyone and her expertise in everything, to her personal life with extensive volunteerism, and in her Region 15 goal-driven work as the editor of the newsletter of the Hemelina. In her continued efforts to promote the love and understanding of Daylily, she visits various venues to give her own PowerPoint presentations and educational programs. She always returns with rave reviews and often with increased club membership. As co-chairman of the 2018 AHS National Convention in Myrtle Beach, she went above and beyond her responsibilities. She set a high bar and led by example in every way. Yet ask her about her accomplishments or contributions on behalf of the region or club, and she will humbly reply with a shoulder shrug. This year's Region 15 Service Award winner is Kathy Taylor. We're now moving on to the Ophelia Taylor Horticultural Award. David Freshour is our exhibition chair and he's the one who shared the information of our two winners. We have two winners this year. First of all, uh, the, just so you know what the Ophelia Taylor uh, Horticultural Award is, it is something that is done in exhibition shows. So an exhibitor can create an entry consisting of a collection of either five different registered cultivars or five seasons. The entry is judged individually by a panel of three exhibition judges. 
And those judges can't talk to each other. They can't communicate. So they have to independently judge scapes. And to win, which is arduous, all the scapes must score 95 points or above individually from all three judges. And again, this is a lifetime award, only once in a lifetime for the state to win. As I mentioned, this year we have two winners. Our first winner is from Region 15, Margaret Wagener. I just need to read that out for a minute so you can see that beautiful display. Our second award goes to Region 2, Nikki Keaton Schmidt. I may have taken that photo of Region 2 in Illinois. Next up, we have the Tricolor Award. Again, David Freshour, our exhibitions chair, shared this information. The Tricolor Award is an interesting award in that in some exhibition shows, not all, there is a special award offered for an artistic division. The Tricolor Award is given annually to an AHS member whose arrangement is judged best with the Tricolor Rosettes of all the winners of the Rosettes of AHS accredited shows. However, selection is by a panel of national of the National Council of State Garden Club Judges. So no one from AHS comes up with the winner. Um, and it's made on basis of the photographs that are submitted of all the rosettes. This year's winner comes from Region 11, from Judy Brock. It's an absolutely beautiful exhibition. move on now to the Mabel Matthews Scholarship. Marianne Duncan is our endowments chair. The Mabel Matthews Scholarship, I'm not going to read all the words there, um, but it's awarded to up to two individuals a year. Um, they have to be a member for three years or more, um, and they need to be seeking a bachelor's or postgraduate degree. Now, there, this is not specific to any field of study. However, preference is given to someone um, looking to get a horticultural, botany, chemistry, or landscape architecture degree. And this, uh, the winners must show service to AHS or a region level. This year, two awards were given. The first winner is from Region 11, Michael Kowalczyk. So much better if we could be congratulating you in person. And Andrew Riley from Region 4. And we do have a youth award. Kathy D'Alessandro shared with me that we do have a Bertie Ferris Youth Fund Award winner. The Bertie Ferris Youth Fund is slightly different. This is a $1,000 scholarship that's available to ADS youth members under the age of 19 at this time. The winners um, must be at least ADS members for at least two consecutive years, and they must be graduating seniors in high school, entering college, university, or technical school, or in a high school or a high school student participating in a dual credit program. The student's future course of study must be in horticultural, in horticulture, botany, plant physiology, or other plant science. This year, our winner goes to Tucker Gaby from Region 10. <laughs> Next up, we're going to go to some flower awards. So we're moving on now to our junior citation awards. Our junior citation awards are given out to seedlings that are not yet registered with an emphasis on distinction, basically. This is a hard um, award to earn as 10 garden judges need to evaluate the seedlings and see them as worthy of the award. And they have to actually go ahead and vote on it. And sometimes it's really hard to get those garden judges to really take a look at those. Um, JC candidates and 
remember to put it on their ballot. So if you have an opportunity, especially this year, to do that, um, be sure to do so because we want to offer a lot of these awards. This is not a part of the Pyramid of Awards, though. This is our first winner is Pablo's Pick by Jenny Kleckner from Region 2. Brian Bender, Region 3 for Untempered Schism. James Fennell from Region 5 for Hope Hill Louise. Robert Selman had two. His first one, and Robert Selman is Region 15. Uh, his first one is His Obsession. And his second is Just Add Romance. Also from Region 15, Eric Simpson earned one for Papa Pattern. Another Region 15 win goes to Ed Zoller for Conway OMG. And the last one awarded goes to Heidi Douglas, also of Region 15, for Wild Wisconsin Women. We are now going to move on to the actual Pyramid of Awards. And our Pyramid of Awards um, at the base of the Pyramid is Honorable Mention. Honorable mention is the first official award on the way to the Stout Silver Medal and serves as the base of our Pyramid of Awards. To win an honorable mention award, a registered cultivar must earn 15 votes from at least four different regions. And garden judges may only vote for up to 12 cultivars as observed in the region. There are a lot of candidates. I am going to go by region. So in region one, we have Carol Emmerich with four winners. Magnify the Lord, Mount Ararat, Broken Chain, and No Ordinary Child. Region two, we have Brett Clement, for one cat too many, and clowns in Washington. Jamie Gossard, for volcanic eruption <coughs> and heavenly new frontier. A Tinnebrew introduction, or a Tinnebrew day really that Jamie Gossard introduced. He earned two with Space Coast White Christmas and Space Coast Black Temptation. Diana Gossard earned two with Cheddar Explosion and Double My Sunshine. John Culpa earned one for Regina Spitzel. Region three. Maxine Bodding for Laura's Double Delight. Bobby Brooks for Ta-da. That's how she intended it, but that's the only way I can say it. Pat Kokenauer for Back to Black. John Hurt earned four for Big Bertha. Big Bertha's sister. How We Want a Cracker and Carnival King. Ernest Larch with Maymont Double. Moving on to Region 4. George Dworkian for Senator Edward M. Kennedy, Green Icon, Cosmic Explosion, and Phil Warbach. Dave Musser earned three for Rosemary Musser, Cherry Stripes, and spots before my eyes. Region five. T. 
Tim Bell for School Bus Greens. Scott Elliott for Sebastian on Steroids and a Little Twisted. Tim Harrington for Hats Off to Sue. Dan Joyner for Savannah's Sweetheart and Wishy Washy. Bill Waldrop for Burnt Hickory and Kennesaw Bean Sapphire. Moving seven. Grace Danilli earned three for Little Sea Sprite, Tiny Tees, and Little Jet Setter. Patrick Danilli earned two for Water Drop and Fancy Lake. Season nine. Ned Roberts earned one for Feather Woman. Region 10. David Kirchhoff earned three for Judy Romano, Barbara, Barbara Deborah White, and Mr. Johnny. Mort Morse earned one for Peppermint Kisses. Region 11. Bob Scott earned two for Top Gun's Apache Warpaint and Top Gun's Sharon Scott. Region 12. Elizabeth Salter earned three for Comet Cosmic Aftershock. Everybody Loves Tim and the One Wing. Jeff Salter earned two the fantastic Barbara Watt and the incredible Earl Watt. Hybridized by Stanilli, introduced by Pierce, Broadway Last Mohican, and Little Night Jewel. And Jane Primer earned one for Swallowtail Comet. Region 13. Nan Wilkerson earned two for My Heart Belongs to Daddy and One Hot Mama. Darlene Wilkinson earned one for Greywood's Dottie Doolittle. Region 14. Fred Manning earned two for Lillian's Caitlin Joy and Lillian's Tara George. Earl Watt earned three for Suburban Wren, Suburban TR, and Suburban Coach Burnham. Region 15. Charles Douglas earned three for Brown Fairy, Cream Supreme, Boys of Summer, and Cynthia Dawn. Heidi Douglas earned two for Breathing in Snowflakes and Hope Float. Heidi and Charles, you're in our thoughts. Just wanted to let you know. Paul Owen earned three for Bruce the Remarkable, Galileo, and Faber Saber. Selman earned five. I couldn't fit them all on one page, so I have two pages for him. Asheville Summer Jewel, Don't Leave Empty Handed, Honky Tonk Barbie, and wait, there's more, Mardi Gras Indian, and Wacky Dragon. I'm going to take a quick sip of water because that was a lot of flowers. <coughs> We're going to move on to the middle step of our pyramid, the Award of Merit. This is the middle of the pyramid and is the second step on the way to earning a Scout Silver Medal. 
To be eligible to be one of the only 12 winners, a cultivar must have previously earned an honorable mention and needs votes from at least one half of the AHSC. No more than one third of a winner's vote can come from any single since there are only 12, I put them all on there. I, no matter if I hybridize it in more than one or not, I put them all on their own slide because this is a very difficult report. First up is Region 1's Carol Emmerich for all things to all men. <laughs> Next up is Jamie Gosser. He earned several. Uh, Jamie Gosser was in Region 2 for Aliens in the Garden. Exotic Starfish. Green Inferno. And Thundercat. Also from Region 2, Sandy Holmes with Wild Flowers. Another Region 2, Richard Norris for Ida Mae Moore. From Region 5, Scott Elliott for WikiWiz. Also Region 5, Tim Harrington for Mayor of Munchkin Lane. Another Region 5, Bill Waldrop for Blazing Canyon. Region 15, Julie Dave, Judy Davison for Mean Green. And another Region 15, Robert Selman with Clown Parade. Now before we go on to the pinnacle of our uh, awards, we are going to be, when I say pinnacle, I mean of our pyramid, uh, we are going to be um, presenting the Lennington All-American Award first. The Lennington All-American Award is given to the daylily voted the best performer over a wide geographic area. The Daylily Society Board of Directors votes on this award at the fall board meeting each year from a list of at least 12 candidates that the awards and honors committee presents. This year's winner is Lil Black Bud. By Ken now we're moving on to the Scout Silver Medal. The Scout Silver Medal is the top honor for a daylily and serves as the top of the pyramid in the Pyramid of Awards. There are only 35 candidates a year which have previously won that very vigorous award of merit and they're only eligible to name for three years. Garden judges have the arduous task of only choosing one cultivar in which they personally have observed in their own region or in an AHS National Convention field garden. The cultivar with the most votes in the end is this year's Scout Silver Medal Award winner is Scarlet Pimpernel by McMahon Ripley in Region 1. Now, part of tradition is that the Scout winner is able to make a speech. And obviously, our Scout winner was not going to risk her health to come down here. Uh, but I was able to have a very lengthy conversation with her. And such a lovely woman she is. Um, and we recorded a speech message. So I'm about to share a message from Ms. Manley. Hi, Nan Ripley here. I hope you are all well and safe. I want to thank the people that put this together for us so that we could share a few moments of our convention, even though we are far apart. I am praying that soon COVID-19 will be defeated. And once again, we can come together. All the glory to God for this wonderful award I humbly accept. Scarlet Pimpernel was a joy from the beginning and is a blessing to me. And I love seeing it in my garden 
and yours. I thank all the people that told me how special it is and to nominate it. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to keep creating flowers to praise our Lord, for the fellowship of so many wonderful people who have championed my efforts and my flowers. Thank you. I cannot tell you how this award has uplifted my heart with joy. And yes, when I heard I won, I went out of my garden and danced and praise God. Please stay safe, healthy, and good to each other until we can once again come together and share those special hugs. Again, thank you very much. What you're not able to see, man, is that you just received a rush of applause and a standing ovation. We're going to move away. We're still talking about flower awards, but we are going to move away from our pyramid of awards, and we are going to be working on our individual cultivar awards. Our first award is the Annie T. Giles Award. It is for a cultivar that is considered a small flower. AHS recognizes small flowers being three inches or more, but less than 4.5 inches, and garden business works too. This year's Annie T. Giles Award goes to Kim Harrington, Region 5, for Halloween Green. The Don C. Stevens Award. This is an individual cultivar award for the most outstanding eyed or banded daisy. And again, garden business vote on this. This year's winner is Patrick Camilli of Region 7 for Walter Kennedy. The Don Fisher Memorial Cup Award is for an individual cultivar that is a miniature flower. And to be a miniature flower, it needs to be registered under a seed. Garden business vote for this. This year's winner is Tim Harrington of Region 5 for Raspberry Ripple Weather. The Early Season Bloom Award is for exactly what you would think. To be eligible, a cultivar must be registered as early as early or extra early and have been registered a minimum of five years prior to balloting. And garden judges must only vote for cultivars observed in their own region or in a just this year's award goes to Pat Kokenauer of Region 2 for Little Lemon Chip. The Eugene S. Foster Award is for an individual cultivar with an, um, that's registered as late blooming. This award is voted on by garden judges, and this year's Eugene S. Foster Award winner is Dan Bachman of Region 2 for Karen the Fairy Man. The Extra Large Diameter Award is an individual cultivar award for outstanding extra large flowers, which means it's registered above seven inches or more and has been registered a minimum of five years. Cultivars that are registered as spiders or unusual forms are not eligible and garden judges must only vote for cultivars observed in their own region or in an age of national convention for garden. This year's winner goes to Bill Waldrop, Region 5, for Blazing Cannon Park. The Harris Olson Spider Award is an individual cultivar award for the most outstanding spider. And a spider is a flower that uh, whose petal length is four times the petal width or more, so that it has a ratio of 4.0 to one or greater. The award is voted on by garden judges. This year's winner, Katie Sue Harrington, Region 5, Journey to I. The Ida Munson Award. It is for an individual cultivar that is registered as a double. The garden judges vote for this. 
This year's Ida Munson Award is goes to Tim Harrington, Region 5 for Honey Crunch Cupcake. The Lambert Webster Award is an individual award for the most outstanding cultivar registered as an unusual form. The award is voted on by garden judges. This year's Lambert Webster, Webster Award goes to Margot Lee from Region 3 for Dances with Giraffes. The R.W. Munson Jr. Award is an individual award for the most outstanding, most outstanding distinctly patterned daylily. The award is voted on by garden judges. This year's winner is Rich Howard from Region 4 for Explosion in the Paint Factory. That was the last of our awards for flowers. We have three remaining awards and they are for people. These three awards, I'm going to be presenting the first one and I'll explain that in just a moment. I'll be um, presenting the first one and all of them are um, lifetime achievement awards. They can only be won once in a person's life. The first of the three is the Moldovan Mentoring Award. This award is a lifetime achievement award, meaning it can only be earned once. Nominations for this award are submitted to me, the work in honors chair, and if the AHS board determines that one of the nominated individuals has mirrored the paradigm of mentoring that Steve Moldovan himself exemplified during his lifetime, it will grant the award. This may include mentoring new hybridizers, mentoring youth, or mentoring a local day lady club. Region 2 sponsors this award, and so historically is the Region 2 director or a representative of Region 2. That is why I am um, giving this award as our new Region 2 candidate. This is a big deal. And so I, um, while this is a snippet and a compilation of a very large uh, recommendation letter, nomination letter, um, I feel that it is worth the time to read and honor this individual. A mentor is an accomplished, experienced person who shares knowledge, insights, and skills maximizes the potential of others as well as the organization, serves as a role model and leads by example, encourages, motivates, and inspires, teaches, educates, assists, advises, guides, or facilitates others, serves as an information source, listens with empathy, and views things with fresh perspectives. This person is all of those. Please consider the depth, the impact, and the breadth of his mentoring. In 1980, this person joined the AHS board, serving through 1987, eight years. His first year, he served as the AHS convention chair, where he obtained two future convention sites, an award-winning photographer from 1981 through 1986, who was the AHS Slide librarian. He created about nine new slide rental programs, including some for doubles and spiders. He instituted the video contest. In 1984, this person simultaneously began chairing the AHS Publications Committee, on which he already had been a member since at least 1980. In the 1987, between editors, he stepped in to produce the 1986 checklist supplement and personally edited, edited a combined spring-summer issue of the Daylily. This combined issue was necessary as the only way to get the journal back on track after slipping a full quarter behind. The only time in history before or since that AHS failed to publish four annual journals after initiating four in 1956. This person's allegiance to his club has been long-term and steadfast. It was his foresight and that of a small group of friends that recognized the need for a club 
in the Baltimore area, just 30 miles to the north. So they established a new day lily club in the Baltimore area, Maryland's Free State Day Lily Society formed. Until a few years ago, he remained actively involved in the club's day lily shows. His exhibits started winning sweepstakes and or reaching the head table, usually with more than one exhibit, as early as 1974. More importantly, he has served in various capacities into this century as show co-chair or frequently as judge's chair. During the 1970s, he became both a garden judge continuing through 1990 and an exhibition judge. He became an exhibition judge clinic instructor in 1992 and became the region three exhibition judges liaison. During 1974 to 75, he served as the region three RPD, then RVP editor, in 1976 and 77. In 1975, he instigated a Region 3 judges poll similar to the Hop Poll. In 1979, he chaired the Region 3 meeting and in 1985, he served as registrar for the regional meeting. His garden was on a regional tour in 1981, 1985, and in 1991. Also, hosting region three in that, that year, and then again in 2009. His garden was on the tour for the 1987 Washington National Convention, of which he was also co-chair and plant librarian. For over four decades, he has exhibited his willingness to mentor and support AHS members, including the youth through his selfless, hard work. He has opened his garden, and has influenced countless others, including you, from other regions and those from other plant societies through his thoughtful organization, instruction, leadership, and friendship. It is now time to honor Paul Bottom from Region 3 with the Steve Maldivin, Maldivin Mentoring Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Now I'm going to call up our president, Scott Elliott, for our last two awards. Thank you, Rhonda. That's an excellent presentation. I'm a little older, I have to take my glasses off for these. Next up is the Bertrand Fard Silver Medal. Okay, the Bertrand Fard Silver Medal Award is a lifetime achievement award, award, meaning it can only be earned once. Nominations for this award are submitted to the award and honor chair. The medal is a distinguished honor for members who have attained outstanding results in the field of daily hybridizing. The award can only be given to a single individual. The AHS board, board votes by a secret ballot at the annual fall board meeting. And the award is presented at the following AHS National Convention, or in this case, the National Non Convention, Non Conventional Commission. Uh, I'm going to read some of the accomplishments of this hybridizer. And remember, this is the highest award that an individual in AHS can earn for hybridizing. Lifetime. It is not just they got lucky once, got one silver medal, or got an award. No, this is a for a body of work and is to get this is the highest honor you any hybridizer would would this is your goal one of your goals is to win a Bertrand Farr silver medal. Oops, that's your stuff. Where's my where's my right No. <laughs> Excuse right me. Under. Got three copies of them set. Oh, there it is. Okay. Thank you, Rhonda. <laughs> I, I, I typed it all up and she wrote stuff on there, so scaring me. Okay, now let me get this thing. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much, Rhonda. I appreciate your help. 
I can't read her own writing. Okay, this year's recipient joined the AHS in the 1980s and is a life member. This person is a garden judge and a senior exhibition judge. This person has previously been awarded the Steve Alderman Mentoring Award. This hybridizer has registered 113 daylilies. This hybridizer has won 14 junior citations, 20 honorable mentions, and three awards of merit. Anyone any ideas yet? This hybridizer has won six specialty awards. The Eugene S. Foster Award for Best Late Blooming Cultivar. The Don Fisher Memorial Award for Best Miniature Flower. The Extra Large Diameter Award. And three Annie P. Giles Awards for Best Small Flower. Any hints out there? Can I see anybody raising their hand on the video? Okay, we'll go back. This is in addition to winning the Florida Sunshine Cup, which is awarded to the hybridizer of the cultivar considered to be the best small or miniature flowered clump observed by attendees at the national convention. This was in Long Island in 2006 with the cultivar name Her Best Bloomers. He also went on to win the coveted Leamington All-American Award in 2015, also with her best bloomers. He is famous for his groundbreaking work in polymerous dailies with 21 cultivars registered as 50% or more polymerous, including his award-winning cultivars, Golly Polly, Hello Polly, Her Polly, Star Polly, and Cake Four. If you haven't figured it out yet, the deserving recipient of this year's Burkhan Farr Award is Don Herr from Raisin Three. Congratulations, Don. Uh, find the next one here. Okay, I've got it. Next up is a Helen Field Fisher Gold Medal. The Helen Field Fisher Gold Medal is awarded is a lifetime achievement award, meaning you can only earn it once. Nominations for this award are submitted to the awards and honors chair. This is the society's highest honor. It is the only gold medal we award. You notice that the Bertrand Farr Silver Medal and the Stout Silver Medal are silver medals. This is the gold medal. AHS honors service above all, and that's what this is. It's a recognition for distinguished and meritorious service to the AHS by a member on the national level. The AHS board, board votes by secret ballot at the annual fall board meeting. There are only two people in the room that even know who the winner is. This award is presented at the following convention or the non-convention as we are doing today. I will now read some things about this person and see if you can figure it out. This year's recipient joined the society in the early 90s. Early on, this person served at the regional level as the RPD and RP in addition to other positions. In 2009, this person began their service at the national level, serving as the AHS Popularity Poll Special Chair. Three years later, this person was elected to serve as an AHS director representing their region. While director, while director, this year's recipient initiated with the assistance of his technology personnel, electronic balloting for the garden judges ballot. This person also initiated the electronic media award, recognizing efforts to promote our mission to the general public and an award recognizing the author of a daily article in a non-daily publication. Now for a little bit of a hint or more. In 2014, she was appointed AHS Vice President by Julie Covington. She was a member of the Executive Committee from 2012 to 2016. 
a member of the Archives and History Steering Committee, a member of the AHS Marketing Committee. C is currently the chair of the Registration Name Review Subcommittee, chair of the Daily Ambassadors Committee, chair of the Display Gardens Committee, co-chair of the Archives and Historic History Committee. Oh, and did I mention she was chair of the Awards and Honors Committee for six years from 2012 to 2017. If you haven't figured it out yet, this year's recipient of the Helen Field Fisher Gold Medal is, oh, I better quote something from her nomination letter first. Melody Campbell brings a bright light of positivity to every AHS task taking pride of ownership in every assignment with the determination for being each improved for her successor. Few others currently have her knowledge of the inner workings of the AHS and the desire to preserve them. Luckily for us, her service to, to AHS is yet to be completed. Her extensive and dedicated years of continuous service across a broad spectrum of areas and the fact that she is a sounding board and a go-to person from whom many seek advice guidance and information on many topics on a regular basis, plus her always enthusiastic desire to spread the daily world as our ultimate daily ambassador, suggests her to be the ideal candidate for recognition of the next Helen Field Fisher Gold Medalist. Congratulations, Melody Campbell. We are going, we are going to attempt to call her and see if we can get her on the phone and see if she wants us to. Um, hi, Melody. This happens to be Scott Elliott, the president. And I know you're watching it live. Yes, we, we know you're watching it live. And that's why we would like to give you a chance to, to if you'd like to say something to everybody as you watch yourself live. Would you be willing to let me know? She says she's not going to watch herself live. Would you want, would you like to say something? And or if you don't, okay. Several days, we just got back from, yes. Okay, you are now on live. Okay. For, what, for once in my life, I am totally speechless. <laughs> I am totally speechless. Scott, are I'm you there? Here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. For, for once in my life, I am totally um, speechless. Okay. <laughs> I, I am totally speechless. I've been watching the awards. Uh, presentation for the last hour or so enjoying it and I was really thrilled that Don Hur won the Bertrand Fly. It was so cool. And then when you started, you know, reading stuff that I've done, I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. I know it's me. It's me. So I am I am so honored to to have won this award. And it has been it has been a, a great daily journey journey since the early nineties. I've loved every minute minute of it. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next part of my journey. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank, thank you, Melody. That was wonderful. And uh, I believe that concludes our awards and honors program. We now have an invitation to the convention in Hattiesburg by Debbie Smith, one of the, the chairs of the convention. Glasses. Okay, I can't hear you. Anyway. All right, good evening, everyone. I would like to tell you a very, very short story. There once were three friends in Mississippi. They all were teachers. One went on to be a principal, and they all were coaches. If someone hollered, coach, they all would look up. Last year, the first one, Bob Hensley, 
died in his yard after working in his garden all day. Several months later, the second, Phil Robinson, passed away after his battle with lung cancer. But that left the third, Mr. Earl White, by himself, and he was very, very sad. We were at Bill Robinson's funeral at the recap. Chuck Holcomb, who's the president of Hattiesburg, popped up and said, I think we could do a national thank you. And my famous last words, I said, sure, it's nothing but original one steroid. <laughs> so the Hattiesburg Area Daylord Society and the Mississippi Gulf Coast Daylord Society would like to invite you to Hattiesburg next year in May on the 19th through the 22nd. We'd love to see you there, and the website should go up in late June. Thank you all very much, and I hope to see you there. Thank you everyone for watching. We hope you enjoyed our uh, non-conventional awards presentation, and we hope to see you at uh, weekend meetings in the gardens and at the next National Convention. Anywhere there's a daily, let's get together and enjoy it. Thank you, everyone, and good night.